Ruby. Hey, Ruby, is it finally time? You've dug up a whole bunch in here. Your udder sure is big and tight. I've seen you do a couple of good stretches with a contraction. We're finally going to see what Ruby has for us. We have been up and down, up and down with whether she's in labor or not for five days straight now. She is five days overdue unless she short cycled and I bred her again at five days and didn't mark it in my calendar. But that's okay. Five days overdue isn't anything to be alarmed about. It's just unusual for her. So it's most likely that I just didn't write down the second time that she short cycled in her breeding. Oh, there we go. See the tail come up, the back arch, the hips. Yep. I've already given her calcium in the form of Tums earlier this morning because I could tell she was about ready to go and I offered them to her and she said yes. So to hopefully avoid any calcium deficiency symptoms during labor, sometimes if there's not enough calcium in their system, they will have a hard time with the contractions and pushing. Um, it helps with the muscle function. Sweet Pea, you need to get off my seat and my clean towels, please. That's my seat. I know, I know. You wanna, you wanna join the fun, right? We got Autumn and Shady in here as well. So Sweet Pea's her daughter. Um, Shady is um, a longtime friend. So, uh, yeah, sometimes it's wanted, sometimes it's not. And Autumn just stays out of the way because, eh. all right, I need to stop this. So I removed Shady because she was starting to irritate Ruby and we don't want Mama irritated. She was only allowed in here um, because it's raining. And so oftentimes when a doe's in labor, they like to have one of their friends as a companion. Sometimes they don't want them in there at all. So we're gonna stay and monitor her for a little bit and see how this is progressing. Pretty exciting. Of course, as the Joe code goes, you choose the worst weather to kid in. It is cold and rainy and yucky outside. So I get to sit in here with her and hopefully not freeze. That's a big one, huh? Big contraction. Oh, yeah. Oh. Got you having to flex that back, huh? Trying to get the babies in position still, huh? Oftentimes when I see that big arch in the back, it makes me think they're just trying to reposition and get it lined up just right. We've got the string of goo. It's a positive indication that labor is progressing. It's normal for it to be amber tinted. It's normal for her to squat and try to urinate and not really urinate that much. It's kind of just what she feels like she needs to do right now. That's not a push. It's just a, but I can see another contraction. See the way her tail goes up, 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 up real high and tight. That's another contraction coming in. She's stretching through it. Ruby is a very well experienced kidder. This is not her first rodeo and she has always kitted quite simply so we're hoping this is our first kidding with her but with her daddy she always did a really good job and with her mama lee when lee was around lee was my goat mentor before she passed away from cancer she's getting more vocal the contractions are getting a lot closer together Things are moving along very nicely. I think she's going to progress pretty quickly. And she's, you hear her voice is changing. She's calling to her baby more. And I think she's about ready to start push in any minute, if not right now. Yeah, is that a push? Yeah. I think I could call that a push. So we got our first push. It was a mild one, so I don't really need to start my timer. Oh, 
There goes the arching. So the arching I always see as like, you're not in the right position. Let's shift you a little bit. So I will wanna keep a close eye on things just in case there is a baby in the wrong position um, and I have to assist, but um, hoping and a praying I don't have to do that this time. <laughs> Oh yeah, I thought those were pushes. We've already got a bubble starting to present. That didn't take long at all. She is progressing very nicely. This is a good example of a nice, fast, easy kidding so far. Keep your fingers crossed and keep your prayers coming. Well, I guess this won't be live or anything. Ooh, maybe I should try to go live. Despite the fact that her daughter has been climbing on her, in a most obnoxious way. She doesn't seem bothered by Sweet Pea's presence at all. And the labor is transitioning nicely. Things are moving right along. All right, here we go. It's go time. Here comes a baby. She's doing really good. I see a hoof in the nose. Perfect presentation. Good job. Keep going. Yeah, baby. You got this. Good job, Ruby. I know it's hard. It looks like a big kid. Yeah, they get big when you're five days late, huh? Welcome to the world, sweet baby. That is a big baby. I had to stop the video for a minute to mm -hmm. get the mucus off of mm -hmm. its face because it kept on trying to swallow it back in. So I didn't want it to asphyxiate on the birthing fluid. So I gloved mm -hmm. up and removed the slime from the face and got the puppy pad a little closer. Nope, nope, bottom. Let her clean. You're not the mama. I haven't checked for sex yet, but we'll do that in just a minute. Good job, mama. I'm so excited. She's beautiful. She's got beautiful Ronin in her face. I, I can't mm. tell the rest of the details because she's so wet still, but mama is cleaning her good and she looks healthy, really healthy. <laughs> strong she's already trying to stand up and she's still attached by the umbilical cord so awesome job ruby so now we just wait and see if she has any more sweet happy family congratulations sweepy you have a little sister yeah. there we go got a little bit of warmth in here we're, we're having a cold front that's getting colder and colder by the minute so Yes, yes, I know. I won't keep it where you can reach it. While I'm not in here, I'll raise it up higher. But while I'm in here and the birthing process is happening and this baby is soaking wet, I want to make sure we don't get too chilled. Um, temperature's going to be dropping even more tonight, so we'll definitely be keeping an eye on the temperature of mama and the baby's baby. Don't know, she hasn't had any more contractions yet. Beautiful baby, large baby, so I'm, I'm not gonna be super surprised if she actually ends up only having this one. But baby is very strong, calling to mama, standing up on its own, showing great progress for such a few minutes old baby. Good job, mama. You good job, girl. Mama and baby are doing really good. Baby's almost completely dry. Hasn't nursed yet, but that's usually after mama gives birth or gets up at least. So, no hurry, she's doing a good job cleaning. Good mama. Oh, look at her, trying to walk to her sister. That's crazy. You're so cute. Sweepy's like, why are you trying to get me? Oh. This kid is not wasting any time. 
trying to get in there and find that udder. Mama just stood up finally. It's only been a half hour since she began pushing to get this one out. And that's pretty normal time for kidding. And she's already kitted, dried off, standing. So we're doing really good on time. I'm not worried about the fact that she hasn't started pushing for another kid. And judging by the size of this big girl, we may not have another. And we have nursing. Oh, this baby is strong, ready to go. This is so funny, this baby is so big that she actually can't stand up under mama to nurse. <laughs> she has to lay down to nurse, but she's doing it. <laughs> she's figuring it out. She's had a couple of good cycles so far. Then she gets lost and then she suckles again. Good, strong, healthy baby. Oh, this is beautiful. This is making my heart so happy. It's been a rough couple of weeks. I needed this new birth, healthy baby and mom to lift my spirits again. I hope it lifts you guys' spirits too to see this beautiful thing happening. Mm -hmm. This kidding season didn't start out as well as expected. We had some unfortunate circumstances with two of our does um, that led to some losses and we've had very heavy hearts due to that and we are just really grateful to have a good outcome this time. Oh this is funny. The little baby is just wandering away, exploring the stall, meeting her sister. <laughs> Sweet Pea doesn't want anything to do with it. But uh, Mama's following her around. Being very attentive. No sign of any more contractions or kids. I did the bump test and I didn't feel anything that sp felt specifically like a kid. She felt like she had a very big hay belly. Like she pigged out this morning, which she did. So I'm going to stay a little bit longer just to keep an eye on things, but I have got to go back up to the house and check on my own kids because their brother um, had to get to class. So I need to run up there and make sure they have everything they need. I just want to make sure that this girl has everything she needs. I'm going to get her some molasses water. I'm going to dip the umbilical cord and I'm going to call it a day, I think. We'll see if anything starts to change here. If she has any contractions where she seems like she's got a kid, but I didn't feel a kid when I did the bump test where I would put my arms around her waist and lift up her belly and let it drop into my hands right above the udder and see if I feel anything solid. And I didn't. Felt like, hey, <laughs> very fat girl still. Really, it's kind of a good thing if she does not have another baby in there because if she has a single, it means we get more milk from her, which means I very likely could try to graft our bottle baby onto her and see if that works out. He's quite smaller than this doling, and sadly, he's an orphan. So we've been raising him on a bottle for two weeks. Um, he has a very strong suck reflex, so I think he would probably take to a teat very easily um, if Ruby's willing to accept him. Um, we'll see. If she's not at least willing to nurse him, um, if she's at least willing to let him be a part of the group and snuggle up with the doling, that will be a good b benefit for us because then we won't have a baby goat running around our house in a diaper anymore. <laughs> so, um, Part of our tragedy in the last couple of weeks was that Kitty went into preterm labor and had three um, three kids that were not able to be saved or anything. They were um, stillborn. And we believe she went into labor early because of the possibility that her doling was nursing on her again. The reason why we think that is because her udder had just started to like really fill up and get big 
days before she started to act like she was in labor. And I was like, what? And then I looked at her udder and it was empty. Like she had a big fat udder and then it was nothing and then she was in labor. So I think that the releasing of the oxytocin that occurs during breastfeeding or nursing is what um, caused her to go into preterm labor. Unfortunately, all three babies were lost, but Kitty did survive, but she has no milk. <laughs> That's kind of unfortunate um, side effect of, of the tragedy of the loss. And then with our other tragedy that we had was even worse in a way, in a lot of ways. Um, Shy went into labor about five to seven days early. It wasn't that early, but it was just a little bit early. Um, nothing to be alarmed about for any, by any means. Um, but it was a difficult labor. There was a stuck kid and it took a long time to get the baby that was stuck to pass. That baby was stillborn. And immediately following that baby, two more popped out almost instantly. Mm -hmm. The first one that came out was very tiny and it was a doling and it was very weak. The third one that popped out was um, a buckling with not as much strength as I'd like to see, but definitely not as weak as the doling. So they both were hypothermic and it was a warm day. They were hyperthermic because of the stress of the delivery. So we rushed them up to the house and immediately began emergency heating of the babies and getting them warmed up. We were able to get the buckling warmed up pretty quick. He didn't get as cold as the doling. Um, the doling had a very hard time warming up, but once she was warmed up, we got some colostrum in a syringe and slowly squirted it in to her mouth. and. We did the same with him and he was sucking on the syringe like it was a teat. So we quickly realized that we could put a Pritchard nipple on the tip of the syringe and he could get a good drink in. So we were able to get a little bit of colostrum from Shy. Um, Shy was experiencing a little bit of shock from the trauma of the birth. I did have to go in very far to get the baby unstuck in the beginning, which caused um, you know, a little bit of strain on her body and it definitely wasn't fun for either of us. So we had her, um, under heat lamp and treat, you know, treating her for shock, giving her molasses water. Um, she quickly recovered. She was fine by that night. We had to keep the babies though, because they were not maintaining their temperature when we took them out of the heat lamp where they had been in our bathroom with a heater going and the bathroom door closed and a heat lamp. And anytime we would turn off the heater or the heat lamp, they both would drop temperatures dramatically. So needless to say, we ended up with bottle babies. Unfortunately, by the second day, we couldn't get the doling to take a bottle. Still, we had been syringe feeding her and we ended up tube feeding her um, two times and she passed away before we had a chance to, to feed her again. So she just was never strong enough. Her temperature would drop in between feedings and I would have to make sure that she was warmed up again before I fed her. So she never really did well and she passed away sadly. And so we were left with a little bottle baby buckling who has been thriving. Fortunately, he thrived and thrived and thrived. They were born on a Wednesday. Shy continued to recover. From Wednesday to Sunday, everything seemed like a normal recovering from a difficult childbirth. Sunday morning, she was not okay. We knew there was something wrong with her, whether it was a uterine infection that had taken place or just the difficulty of the birth itself just caused too much trauma for her. She was depressed because she didn't have her babies, but they were not maintaining temperature enough to come out with mom. 
and there was no way to bring mom into the bathroom. <laughs> and sadly, she, we did everything we could. She had all the antibiotics, she had all the medicine, um, she had all the herbs, she had all the probiotics. I mean, literally everything you could think of to, to get a goat out of a difficult situation, she had. But sadly, she passed in her sleep Sunday night. So that was the most difficult part of all of it, is losing Shy. She was a very special goat. She was a goat with an incredibly loving, beautiful soul. And she will be severely missed. So, having Ruby go through this kidding and be beautiful and wonderful and good and no complications is exactly what my soul needed right now. So, I'm very, very happy and they're doing really good. This baby is so strong. I think we have a winner. <laughs> so, I think we can go check on Rowan and Liam now and not worry about mama and the baby. They're fine. They're doing really well. And I think mama might be done. I think that might be it. So if I come back down here and we have another baby, I'm gonna be surprised. But first things first, I'm gonna get that heat lamp into a safe location where none of the goats can reach. And then I'm going to come back and check in a little bit. Why must you be in my face? What are you doing? What are you doing? What is on my face that you just have to sniff every little inch of my face? What is it? I don't know. You're a crazy baby. You are a crazy baby. Crazy baby.